Tuesday morning, the 20th, November, Southern Colorado. Watching this uh, massive operation off the coast of California since last night. I roll through here in about uh, two and a half, three days' time. But in the meanwhile, like yesterday, we started with uh, beautiful skies. Visibility is across the valley, um, exceeding 100 miles. Very, very, very clear air. And you can see off in the distance just some trails. And as they begin to come together, so do the clouds. So my bet is that like yesterday, we get to noon 1 o'clock, and we'll go from entirely sunny to mostly sunny to then cloudy. And you can see as I get away from the trees and off the horizon, it's kind of easy to see those trails there working. And then emails from trails in Houston, St. Louis, off the coast of California, that intense activity. And over a big breadth of the East Coast, as they are contending with, again, additional storms. All right, I'll be out and about today. Slowly starting to fill in the sky. Trail, the trail. The trail. Otherwise, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm getting to the latter part of the afternoon, and the trails are starting to do what they always do. And that spread. Cover the sky. And this one here, we're beginning to see some of the magnetic field lines coming off onto the south side of it. You can see those repeating lines as the powders get spread if not pulled aggressively off to uh, off to the south get back behind the tree here to give us a little cover and then uh, more action continuing on the southern horizon out towards New Mexico it's thick down there today as they continue to, to lay them down and it's intense in California, off to the west. Had that update last night about uh, that operation that's going on out of the mid-Pacific. And then it could, one continues along the, the Gulf Coastal states. So it's just, we've got quite an operation here. Got quite an operation going on across the globe. And there's uh, coming up on our first quarter moon. Fascinating how we have all these trails that are now thick overhead. And it all begins where we have these cross trails, these ones that are southwest and north northeast. And with those, it seems to be kind of like the boundary to where these other ones, these other persistent ones, can begin. Off onto the horizon, I don't know if we'll be able to see it. You gotta watch my stuff in 720p. You gotta watch it in high def on YouTube. That just does it the most justice. Because if you get to 240 or even 360, it just barely gets us enough uh, resolution to make out the subtle details and color and textures and so forth that uh, that are manifest in these clouds. So I'd like to want to watch the sky and see if we can't get any more of these marking ones showing up here that are leaving us this mess to contend with tonight. Because I'd like to get out the telescope, but if we're cloudy like this, it just isn't worth it. I asked to see one of these ones that's spreading the trails forever and ever and ever. And he was happy to oblige, not five minutes later. Coming in from the northwest. Coming across that trail here. Through this one. Just had another, another plane kind of run out ahead of it. He's up over here. And so it's curious how. His trail isn't sticking on top of the old one. And you would think it would be the opposite. It's very, very bright at this edge and then continuing on also fades at the other trail. So what is it about this mixture that scared the living bejesus out of this trail? They said, uh-uh, I'm not showing up. I'm not gonna stay visible. And it looks like, and it's very bright right here, He's passing through the through the trail, actually right on top of it, because we have this disturbed field, this disturbed trace, this disturbed track 
that matches up with this other trail. So why are these aerosols not sticking on this old trail? Riddle me that. I'm watching these trails. We had this center, center one. Funny how it crosses this guy where it arcs here, right at the bottom of, of where it's visible. But this one, up to about 10 minutes ago, these two trails, how, how do I even say this? Because they were coming at opposing angles. This one was up and this one was pointed down. And now they've kind of collapsed all on the center point. And then this one, of course, as you can see, has this flare, has something that is having it come up, up, and peel away. Get a little closer. You can see the ribbling in there. And the trail comes along. Now that it's joined, these both, these two have both joined this other other trail and they were not. They were there was a big gap above and below with these other previous trails. And now we have this anomaly here. And uh, the big ugly stuff that has been overhead is now cleared off nearly entirely. And that's progressed off to the south and east, and we're left with just some activity on the western horizon. I have two trails going on here. That one and this one. You can see they're very different. Very different trails. These planes are flying in somewhat of a formation. See, this one's just almost completely failed. The trail is off. Push on in. He's going to make it here. He's going to pass overhead. So I am going to see it. Now if I pop down below, see the other one still trailing. Do we still have one trail? Are they now both off? No, it's still there. So this is an option. These planes do not have to leave a trail. They just don't. Especially when one fails, turns off, goes invisible, then you still have this action. Now I'm going to iris down a bit, see if we can get some more detail in it. That's 2EV minus 2EV. Bring it back up. So there's two, two planes. Now there's just one trail. Down on the horizon, it's still active. Very active. We're kind of getting to the point where the sun's not far off the mountains. But here we go. And don't tell me this is a commercial plane, you know. La dee da dee da. I've heard that a thousand times. It's going to make that kind of a bend. It's going to make that turn. That's not going to happen. Period. And all these morons that say, oh, there's no such thing, these are just contrails. Open your bloody eyes. Don't be so stupid. You know, those who aren't taking a stand, who haven't admitted that this is going on, are deluding themselves with willful blindness. Because this is not a hard thing to, to figure out. We had another set of planes coming here. This is a, uh, apparently another high-interest place where we have this uh, essentially the cloud that's between the two, the two trails here. This one's coming along. And he's probably interested in some gap in this trail that did this 90 degree bend. Something happened with this 90 degree bend, so we're going to watch this trail here. See where he intersects. It'll be either through the gap or at the edge of one of these gaps. Maybe this upper part of the gap or straight on through it. We'll have to wait and see. It might even be this little flare, this little curtain, curtain billowing out end where it looks like the trail here has kind of gone through a bit of an uplift. I'm hearing a plane overhead. I'll throw this on pause and have a look, see what's going on overhead. So there we are. It was through the curtain. It was through that little uplift. Right below it. So it went through probably the level that this first trail flew, the one that turned, this guy. And then the, the trail has been lifted up in elevation and altitude. And this plane probably cut underneath it at the bottom extent that the powders, the aerosols, um, the condensation had uh, had drifted down to. And then a huge old mark there. And then the plane is on its merry way. 
So what's happening? No, just a tick there. That's a light. And this plane's gone through this mark, through this cloud, and then he's on to something else. Got a couple of planes coming up um, on the east behind me. This one we'll take a look at. But then this one's not trailing at all. Push on in. It looks like UPS. Yeah, it looks like UPS. So he's a low and slow dude. Let's see if we can't get a little better color on him by dimming the picture. Definitely UPS. And then the guy overhead. Another UPS. This is a DC-10 variant. So he's definitely came trailing. And then we'll have to look at what target off in the distance this guy's interested in. Because this trail is, is one of the stickers. And then our the UPS flight still isn't trailing. So they're kind of flying in, in, in tandem here. One with, one without. So, we'll have to see where he's headed, what target in these other chemtrails he's interested in. Ah, so it wanted to change. It needed to turn just a little bit. So something in this, this trail here. Look at that fatty. It's a lot of exhaust. Here we've got this trail that, to the bend of the flare out where the other trail went underneath it and it spread out nicely. Here's where the big turn happened. Got a nice spread there as well. And it just happened to be where another cloud or another trail had previously shown up. They've got a bunch of planes in the sky now. Probably six all together. I'm hearing one but I'm not seeing it. The UPS DC-10 flight went right through this trail here. For some reason, the uh, powders, the aerosols, are not remaining visible at this spot. We've seen this a lot today where we've had contrails, trails, chemtrails, whatever you want to call them, passing through previous trails. It's like one is charged negative, one is charged positive, and never the two shall meet. Here's our stuff on the horizon. Another plane glinting, I thought I saw. Another plane comes through here. There it is. That looks like a nice little four engine jobby. I don't know if he's coming or going. He's probably coming this way, but he's definitely not trailing at this point in the game. And so, whether there is or is not enough material on board for these guys to trail for thousands of miles is kind of irrelevant. They only turn them on when they need them. Like I've said before, you only use what you need. Period. The dogs at the park. Another chemtrail down here. Just hit the tip of this other trail that we spotted a bit ago, I mean rather precisely so. So they're just, something is happening in this location that they're keenly interested in. Something very curious is going down in their world. Whether they're hunting anomalies, you know, and another thought, because these are all kinds of, what if, what if, what if this is a smart dust? 
What if there are energetic spots in the atmosphere that animate the cloud, that animate the storms, that animate the sylphs, that animate our weather? And what if they're laying these powders, these fibers, this shit down in places where it is life force rich? And in doing so, um, it animates the powders. They become alive. Morgellons fibers come alive. So this plane is, uh, again, obviously he's not another UPS flight. He's disguised to look like UPS. Otherwise, he would not have made that, that turn. I mean, that's just a stupid hard turn. And so uh, we know he's not a commercial flight. We know it's not UPS delivering cargo, taking it from, from Dallas or Houston off to Salt Lake. Because all of a sudden, he's vectored north to Billings, Montana. You know, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And when you see plane after plane after plane make these kind of changes, then the whole idea that they're just on their scheduled flights um, just kind of falls apart in its entirety. There's another one I was hearing but not quite seeing. We spotted him. This one's low. This puppy is low, 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 low. Looks like a Delta paint scheme, but I'm not positive. I'll see it on the big screen, but I honestly can't believe I didn't see it until just now. You know, he's so low, and he's just got his engines throttled back so much. that I'm like, where is he? Where is he? And there he is. Um, I don't know what they're doing, guys. They're hunting something to be at this kind of crazy low altitude. He's just so low. I don't see if, I'm, if I can keep track of him or if I'm going to lose him in the trees before he goes over the mountains. Yeah, I'm going to lose him over the mountains. Yep. Man, he's gone. So why? Why, why, why? And here's the trail for that crazy UPS flight. Watch another trail that came out of this this cloud here. This lift, this this rise, this cross ash, this this cloud. Again, it wouldn't be there save for it being for another trail. And it's a blue one. You can tell that by the color. But it's not necessarily one of the one of the orange or pink one per persisting ones. But he was just hitting that target. So there's numerous planes on the horizon. This afternoon in that DC-10 of FedEx. Look what he's done again. Another turn. Turn, turn, turn. Look at that. That's a huge turn. And sometimes they'll turn off the mixture so they're not seen when they do these kind of turns. But this is the third one now that we've captured. So this is a UPS flight that is just a little bit confused about his destination. Just like, really, where am I headed? I don't know, guys. Send me somewhere else. Who knows how many times he'll do this before he uh, gets to his destination, but that's what these planes do. They wander, wander, wander. So what I'm curious about is if you're looking at them on Flight Radar 24, which I find only mildly useful, um, when he does a vector change like this, does all of a sudden, is he squawking? Is his transponder squawking that he's headed in a different destination? Or is it just the same old, same old? And you can see the powders lifting away, separating away from these vortexes, these tubes on the plane. So, uh, more questions. I always have questions. A few answers, lots of questions. A little blue trail we're watching back here. There it is here. Another plane going right through one of these uh, cam trail, cam cloud targets. You see, went through the bright knot in the center of the screen. You know, it was not not an accident. He went right for it, straight through it. Let's investigate this thing. Right on through, guys. Don't be bashful. 
What didn't change was that the trail didn't brighten up, but it did stay visible, like some of these others that have faded off today. That one just kind of remained steady state. This mess down here just continues. That little bright spot just stays hot. Somebody's gonna chat. Somebody on the inside knows. And we gotta have the sun very, very close to the horizon. We're very close to, to sunset. Hello everybody, uh, Scott Stevens here, uh, doing a little map discussion. We've got the uh, the, the cloud discussion uh, with the camera. I think we'll probably split these uh, two projects out, otherwise the files just are a little bit too long to, to be easy to digest. All right, we'll start with the, the surface map across the U.S. and the sensible, the, the ugly weather has been across the western states with these persistent rains along the British Columbia coast through Washington and Oregon where the rains are welcome and, and, and desperately need, needed, but they do continue continue on. We've got this low sitting off the coast of uh, the Queen Charlotte's with the onshore flow with rains through uh, through Medford, Oregon on up to Portland and then certainly through the Puget Sound area with the weakening low finally bringing some rain, some light rains north of the Bay Area. Uh, as we move inland we've got multiple weak centers of high pressure but largely working together across the Great Basin from western Oregon or western Wyoming excuse me into northern New Mexico. The well, temperature is really pretty agreeable. Light rains up in Chalice, Idaho, a little drizzle in, in the, the Bailey Sun Valley area. Uh, Why we have 50s and 60s through the Treasure State with a cold front, a rather potent one at that, beginning to at least a 21Z, which would be 2 o'clock Mountain Time, uh, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, just now ready to surge out of Canada. And this is some mighty cold air. You can see the center of the high pressure nearly along the Arctic Ocean with temperatures underneath it in this particular instance of minus 13. Point Barrow at minus 7 with some haze. Fairbanks uh, at about minus 10. And these are mid-afternoon temperatures. Still with some light flurries. Uh, morning lows this morning, I believe, were in the mid-20s below zero. So that's cold. So this high is nosing its way southward into Montana. And we're looking at uh, nearly a 50-degree temperature differential across this particular front with the main area of low pressure across north central Manitoba. Uh, as we move into the U.S., the central portion of the U.S., another you know, weak high pressure over central Kansas with 69 at Wichita mid-afternoon, 66 Topeka, 58 up uh, through the Des Moines uh, area, and then even relatively mild as we move into Minneapolis where we're looking at lower to middle 50s, and then just kind of a beautiful day across the mid-south, the deep south, Gulf, Gulf coastal areas with 60s, low 70s, and even a few 80s as we pop into the Texas hill country, and then Florida dealing with an east northeasterly breeze keeping temperatures somewhat cooler. It is a little bit later in the day at this point in the game and there is this low that has remained off the southeastern coastline and that's keeping some showers not quite there but they are nearby in the cloudy skies from Newport News, Virginia and then uh, much cooler through New England but still gorgeous nonetheless with a, with a high sitting out over the St. Lawrence uh, Seaway. As we look at the uh, the western states, that's not exactly where I wanted us to pop into, here's some of those clouds. And again, this incredible, incredible rippling action. This is all artificial. There's no way, there's no way that there's any geographic mountains that would generate these kind of wave clouds. And then all of these odd cross-forming ripples embedded in a smaller scale on top of these massive ones. I would be curious to see what it looks like from below. I've seen these here in Colorado, even at times in Idaho, but this is all engineered. And then the showers are piled up with just some light rains along the Cascades, on the, on the, on the coastal ranges. We've seen some breaks in the clouds and got a little bit of sunshine from now and again. Uh, California, you can see some trails north of Catalina as we head towards Santa Cruz and the northwards of the Central Valley. There's been some trails and certainly across the Silver State through Nevada, lots of trails. Then here's the cloud cover responsible for the light rains in, uh, in uh, northern uh, California. Lots of high clouds, certainly with trails. It's hard to get this kind of cloud shield across New Mexico, Arizona, West Texas without there being trails embedded therein. But what we had been watching with the, uh, the article I titled Massive Pacific Operation Underway is still not in view. It's not a view of this particular uh, imagery. We'll come to that in a sec. I want to go back to uh, mid-afternoon into the southeast. We can see from Greenville, South Carolina, through Savannah, Georgia, laden with trails this afternoon. 
is they are working the backside of this low that at the surface reflection is just kind of these little curly cues here, these little swirls, that's about it. Um, it will evolve over the next couple of days and become something uh, a little more substantial and likely just grazing the eastern seaboard. Here's the clouds as we uh, move through uh, Pennsylvania. We've got some curious geometry here. Push, push with the center street coming out as the clouds are kind of kind of being wrapped into whatever this particular anomaly is. And then, of course, the chemtrails lay through all of this stuff through uh, New York State, uh, the northern part of the Mohawk River Valley, and uh, the Hudson River Valley as well, and then across New Hampshire, Maine, and into Quebec. You can see the chemtrails in Quebec. So uh, it's, it's an active. It's active. These guys have hundreds upon hundreds of aircraft, and they use them every single day. When you have a funding mechanism, a funding system, which is independent of the public money system, then, you know, you can do so many things off budget. You can pay off your buddies. You can buy tree planes and, and chemicals. You can do all of that off budget. All right, here's the, what the jet stream looks like with the deep trough sitting off of uh, the British Columbia Alaskan coastline and then throwing that on stream, that onshore moisture into Northern California through the Northwest. Kind of a weak, relatively unorganized, not yet condensed trough through the Great Lakes states. This does sharpen up as the ridge here through Texas, uh, Iowa, Wisconsin tomorrow begins to amplify and then this, this storm begins to develop off the coast. Another impulse hits Washington, Oregon will spread into the Bitterroots uh, and Tetons and Yellowstone area of Idaho on tomorrow, Wednesday morning. So they're likely to get some snows down to probably 7,000 feet, maybe even a little bit lower. It's certainly possible that it could be lower through the Pacific Northwest. And then this low finally begins to close off as we're uh, working towards a Thursday morning. And it looks like it largely stays offshore because this next domino is falling. It's pushing it out to sea. Earlier in the week, it wasn't quite apparent whether this storm was going to have enough amplitude or sharpness to be able to um, push this off. It looked like they might get entrained and then come in together, but that's not the case. High pressure begins to nose into California. So we are looking at Thanksgiving Day. Unsettled weather, we might spark a few showers through through Arkansas, essentially the mid-Mississippi River Valley, and then also the western lakes states. We might see some snow, probably will see some snow across the Dakotas and into the mountains of, uh, of Wyoming as this next cool front will push southbound. And then the day after uh, Thanksgiving, the big shopping day, this is going to be your unsettled day. Uh, across the Great Lakes states and the Ohio River Valley, where as much of the West and the Southern states are going to be gorgeous and going to be gorgeous probably through the entirety of, of the holiday weekend. This is going to be interesting. This storm may develop into a little more of a mountain snow event for the Northern Rockies. Otherwise, as we get to back to work uh, next Monday, this is about it for the sensible weather. As a ridge really begins to reform in the Gulf of Alaska, that's unfortunate because it'd be nice to see some rains and uh, more rains farther south along the Pacific coast. And if this ridge forms as modeled, then that simply is not going to happen. Alaska will warm up the cold air instead of being pooled up through the Northwestern Territories, the Yukon Territories in Alaska will be settling in over Hudson Bay. And then that opens up the super cold air to move through the Great Lakes states, through the Mid-Atlantic states and through New England. So we might be signaling a return to much, much cooler weather over these locations as we get to the middle of next week. And we're still doing reconstruction on the Northeast coast. This means that it's going to be a challenge for those folks uh, dealing with that, that kind of weather. We'll head out to uh, the Pacific, and we were watching last night this massive chemtrail operation as it was, was kind of out in here. You can see, still see it's still going on. They're still working this particular storm. So we're beginning to see those kind of trails and those kind of clouds just now beginning to head towards Point Conception into California. And it looks like it's going to be entrained at least partially into this event that is now uh, streaming clouds northbound. But I'm still watching this closely. This still seems to be a, a rather large event. And I'm not sure how this is going to play out. As you can see the trails, they just begin to light up. The geometry they're in. And so they're, they're playing with this to some end, and I haven't figured that out just yet. Back east, throw some enhancement back on this, and uh, lots of trailing, lots of activity on the, uh, in, in the higher clouds across the Mid-Atlantic states and through New England, and then, of course, right into here, especially this morning. 
of course we're going to have to do a refresh. Um, so let's pop over to here to the radar while that other page loads. And you can see the showers, we can see the, the rains and snows and the pinks and the blues. See these spikes marching across the country. That is sunset. The, that is all of the particular, the individual radar sites seeing the sun as it sits just a degree or a half a degree or kisses the horizon. And so each one of these radar spikes is pointing to the direction of the sun. You will get those at sunrise and you will get those at sunset. You can see that these spikes are pointing towards the southwest. It is now winter. In the summertime, they will point towards the northeast and northwest, correspondent with the angle of the sun, or at least the azimuth is the sun, as we call it, on the horizon. And then here's was a lot of the activity. The, the big activity was on the back edge of this particular storm on this day. It's this storm digging in here that is kicking this out and will likely preclude this from becoming a nor'easter type of event. So that just about wraps it up. Quick look at the, at the forecast. Let's uh, hit the six to 10 day. You can see there's the cold weather that I'm concerned about back east as the chilly weather will be east of the continental divide and encompassing a, a big chunk of the eastern U.S. probably until the until and likely through the first week of December with the west, west protected by that ridge of high pressure so they're likely to be high and dry. That one storm right in here uh, as that cold Canadian air comes down we might get some upslope snows uh, as we get towards the end of November uh, across Nebraska, western Nebraska, uh, Wyoming and eastern Kansas. So that's about what it looks like tonight. Here's the hemispheric chart and, uh, and then the chemtrails off the east coast. So folks, keep looking up, share it far and wide as we need to uh, get more weathermen on board with this so they can actually uh, have a clue as to what's going on. Here's my site, weatherwars.info. Uh, get these map discussions up there and also share it on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for watching. And there we go on sunset, guys. Last light of the day. No green flash. Well, not that I'm privy to at this, at this spot. And of course, a little short chemtrail running through the debris of clouds. Look over here, there's our other formation we've been watching for the last half hour or so. We've just had another flight come through. This little knot that we observed. So something, this particular plane, and there's probably another target that he's interested in fairly shortly, meaning this cloud here. Top, bottom, or through the middle. We'll find out in a bit, but it looks like it's going to be right through the middle of it. Or maybe the top, upper segment. But I mean, not kind of oblique to its its angle, but nevertheless, that's what I was interested in. Alright, I'm going to head back home. And then get this posted. Did a little map discussion and then call it a day. Everybody, thanks for sharing. I know we don't get a lot of views on these, but that day will come. That day will come when we get tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands watching these daily and when that happens the world will be on the verge of changing it will be on the verge of changing because once people know this then they can't help but see what's happening in the sky if we can give them a sane example or a sane reason for what they're seeing it makes it all the easier to digest much easier to digest something that you can understand rather than just some theory, some speculative theory. You can explain what the trails are doing up there. It goes a lot farther in getting the message across. Look at them all. Look at them all.